Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is episode 14 of the Quranic Archaeology series and in this episode we will discuss some more verses of the Quran which seems to be pointing towards a possible location but I'm not sure whether the chapter and verses of the Quran are actually referring to it or not. Take the city of Aden in Yemen for instance which is known in history to be a famous harbor. First mentioned in historical records in the Old Testament book of Ezekiel as a trading partner with Tyre, the harbor was first used between the 5th and 7th century BC by the kingdom of Osan. The ancient port of Aden was a way station for seagoing vessels and people. They stopped there to get supplies, particularly fresh water. If we check the coordinates of the city of Aden, we find it to be 12 degrees north and 45 degrees east. Now when we look at the Quran chapter 45 verse 12, it says, Allah is the one who has subjected the sea for you, so that ships may sail upon it by his command, you may seek his bounty, and that perhaps you will be grateful. It seems that the Quran in this verse is talking about Port of Eden. Next take Kobekli Taipei, one of the oldest stone temples in the world. It is composed of a series of megalithic structures containing rings of beautifully carved T-shaped pillars. It sits on a mountain ridge in southeast Turkey, just 13 kilometers from the ancient city of Urfa. The site is one of the oldest man-made places of worship yet discovered, dating back to 10,000 BCE in a time when many historians and archaeologists believe temples and religious practices of this kind should not exist. Archaeologists and historians are stunned as to how hunter-gatherers who were naive of writing, metal or pottery making organized themselves, grouped together and somehow found a way to cut and transport 16-ton stone pillars up a hill and arranged them in a circular ritualistic pattern to worship with priests and sacrifices. The geographical coordinates of the site are 37 degrees north and 38 degrees east. And in the Quran chapter 38 verse 37 it reads, and also of jinn, every builder and diver. If you read the context, the verses are speaking of Prophet Solomon, which according to our current understanding of history, could not be living 10,000 years ago. However, if you read this verse only, it becomes clear who built the temple of Gobekli Taipei, because the dilemma that who constructed the temple becomes clear. It is possible that the Quran in this verse is drawing our attention to the element of construction and not Prophet Solomon. Since the verse does not specifically talk about a building or temple constructed by jinns, therefore much research is needed to conclude whether Kobekli Taipei was built by otherworldly creatures or the verse of the Quran is speaking of some other fact. Next up we have another ancient city, Uruk, described by archaeologists as the first city the writing, social hierarchies, specialized occupations, coercive political structures, writing, religion, and, liter and literature first emerged. Uruk was situated in the place now called Iraq, about 150 miles south of modern-day Baghdad. Uruk was the first major city in Sumer, built in the 5th century BC, and is considered one of the largest Sumerian settlements and most important religious centers in Mesopotamia. It would be true to say that Uruk was Mesopotamia's and the world's first city. The geographical coordinates of the city are 31 degrees north and 45 degrees east. When we open the Quran chapter 45 verse 31, it says, And as for those who disbelieved, they will be told, Were my revelations not recited to you, yet you acted arrogantly and were a wicked people. The verse in Arabic uses the word qom which means nation and in my opinion addressing the disbelievers of Uruk. When we read in continuation succeeding verses says and whenever it was said to you surely Allah's promise of judgment is true and there is no doubt about the hour you said mockingly we do not know what the hour is. We think it is no more than speculation and we are not convinced it will ever come and the evil consequences of their deeds unfold before them, and they will be overwhelmed by what they used to ridicule. It will be said, This day we will neglect you, as you have neglected the meeting of this day of yours, your home will be the fire, and you will have no helpers. This is because you made a mockery of Allah's revelations and were deluded by your worldly life. So from that day on, they will not be taken out of the fire, nor will they be allowed to appease their Lord. 
So these verses may be telling us about the people of Uruk who ridiculed the revelation of God, denied the hour and suffered the consequences. However, I may be completely wrong. These verses may be addressing the entirety of the disbelievers as disbelievers together are a comb or a nation because they all reject the message of God and they all disbelieve. Once again, I want to remind you that I am not sure whether the verses discussed in this video are pointing towards Adan, Quebecli Taipei, or people of Uruk. So do your own due diligence before accepting this as valid proof of all evidence. But it is quite interesting that Quran is providing us the account of all these nations who rejected the messengers and suffered the consequences in a time when we are mere speculating of what might have happened. That is all for today's video. If you find this video to be of any value, give it a thumbs up and share it with everyone you know. Thank you very much for watching. Jazakallahu khair.